Hey y'all, today we are making some chicken and bacon corn chowder. All right, to start out with, we're gonna go ahead and get some potatoes peeled and cut up. Now y'all know I say this every time because I just feel like I need to put it out there. I always peel my potatoes with a knife right in my hand. Do not do this if you're not comfortable with it. You can certainly use a potato peeler if that's what you're more comfortable with. But however you do it, get your potatoes peeled up. You're gonna need about four like medium sized potatoes for this. I use just regular old russet potatoes. You can use whatever kind of potatoes you have in your cabinet, in your pantry, in your refrigerator, wherever you keep your potatoes. I don't know where you keep your potatoes, but just use whatever you have. Now y'all, this recipe I got from my friend Kim over at Feathered Friends Homestead. I'm going to drop her link down in the description box. She just put this on her channel last week, and when I saw this recipe, I was like, oh my gosh, and I told her, I was like, I've got to make this. So, I'm gonna make it and share it with y'all, but be sure you go check out Miss Kim's channel so you can see all the other good and yummy and fun stuff that she's doing on her channel. So you're gonna go ahead, like I said, and just get your potatoes all nice and cut up. Don't make them too small. You don't want them to disintegrate, but don't make them so big that they don't cook. So once you get your potatoes all peeled up, y'all, and cut up, make sure you wash them, get all that potato dirt off. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and get some onion cut up. Now, I don't know what onion field these things came from y'all but it was the miniature field apparently these are the smallest onions <laughs> i have ever seen now could i have gotten off my behind and gone in the walmart myself yes i could have and i probably wouldn't have ended up with tiny onions but i didn't i was lazy i did walmart grocery pickup and these are the onions that i got so i gotta use what i have right so I'm just gonna go ahead and chop up about three of these. Now I don't end up using all three because I did have one that was kind of a decent size, but yeah, I'm always in the kitchen cooking and I'm always needing onions. So I just put the other half in a Ziploc bag and I can throw it over in the freezer or if I'm cooking soon enough, I'll just chunk it over in the refrigerator and that way I don't have to cut my onion up the next time I need it. So once you get your onion all diced up, look, I got onion falling everywhere, y'all. No onion left behind. Make sure you get them all. So just go ahead, set that over to the side till we're ready for it. Now we're going to go ahead and add in about a pound of bacon. Now I had one of those, like, um, I don't know, the value pack or whatever, the really big pack of bacon. So I just opened it up and took about half of it out of there. And you're just going to want to cut this into bite-sized pieces, you know, because it's going in soup and we don't want a humongous piece of bacon. We want to get a little bite of bacon in everything we do. All right, now on our stove, I'm going to cut that up on high and I'm going to go ahead and add our bacon right into my little Dutch oven. Now, I like using my Dutch oven because it holds heat good and it doesn't stick as bad as some of the other pots that I have. And we gotta cook this in a lot of layers, y'all, cause this is what Miss Kim did, and so that's what we're doing, because I'm telling you, hers turned out looking so good, I could smell it through the TV. I could smell it through the TV. So I just, I had to make it, I had to make it. So go ahead and don't, and look, my Dutch oven ain't dirty, y'all, it's just well loved. So don't worry about that either. So go ahead and just, I was trying to break it up just a little, but it'll break up as it cooks. So once your bacon is about halfway done, you're gonna go ahead and add in your onion. Now, like I said, I'm only using about half of what I cut up because it ended up being a pretty good bit. It was a little more than I thought. So I just, I'm gonna just save the rest for next time. So you're gonna go ahead and cook this around and don't worry about that stuff sticking down on the bottom. That's the good stuff and we're gonna get that up once we start adding liquid. So don't even worry about it. So you're just gonna let those onions cook until they're starting to get a little bit see-through. Then once that happens, we're gonna go ahead and add in those potatoes that we diced up and washed. Make sure you wash them, y'all. Wash the dirt off your taters. So then we're gonna just stir those around until your potatoes are nice and coated in that little bacon grease that we had left, okay? So once we get all that done, we're gonna go ahead and put a little bit of seasoning on here. Now, I didn't start with a whole lot because you can always add to it but you cannot take it back out y'all know I always say that so just make sure that you pay attention to that because we're going to be adding you know other things to this and you don't want it to be overly salty 
Okay, so then I added a little salt, pepper, a little garlic, a little onion powder. Y'all y'all know the routine. If, if you've been here long enough, you know the routine. That's what we start with. That's our base right there. So go ahead and just stir those around until your seasonings get good and mixed into all the stuff you've got there in your pot. And we're going to just let those potatoes cook just a little bit till they start getting a tiny bit soft. Then I added in about a tablespoon of minced garlic, and we're going to let that cook for about 30, 45 seconds because we don't want to burn that garlic because if you burn the garlic, everything in your soup is going to taste bitter, and we don't want to do all this work and end up with some bitter soup, right? So after we get our garlic added and all cooked in, we're going to add in a couple of tablespoons of just some regular old all-purpose flour. Now we're going to add this because this is going to help our soup to thicken up a little bit as it cooks. So, but you certainly don't have to add it if you don't want to. So let that flour cook a couple of minutes until you get that raw flour cooked out. Then you're going to add one can of regular corn with the juice. Leave the juice in it. Then we're going to add one can of cream style corn. Now I'll be honest with y'all, this is almost where Miss Kim lost me on this recipe. <laughs> I have never put cream style corn in a soup like this before, but I trusted her. Hers turned out looking so good. So I said, I'm going to trust the process and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with it. So add your, your can, regular corn and your cream style corn. Then we're going to add in two cans of evaporated milk. And if you don't have evaporated milk, you can substitute regular milk half and half, maybe half whip, heavy whipping cream, half milk, whatever you have it'll work just fine. Then you're going to stir that around a little bit until we get everything nice and stirred in. Look at all that good stuff in there, y'all. My gosh, my house was smelling so good by this point. I just, ooh, I knew this was going to be good. I already knew it. I already knew it because it smelled so good. All right, now we're going to add in a couple of cups of liquid. Now, Miss Kim used water, but I had this chicken broth that was off of some chicken that I had cooked, and I always save my broth, and I put it in the freezer. You know, saves you money, and it tastes better. So this was about two and a half cups, and I just added that right over into my pot. I figured a little chicken broth wasn't going to hurt. Look at that, y'all. But I want y'all to see, too, how thin that liquid is because it's going to thicken up, so don't let that worry you. All right, so remember that chicken I was talking about? Well, I had cooked it because I was going to make some quesadillas. But I was like, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and add some of this chicken into this chowder because it certainly can't hurt. So I added what was about the equivalent of one big chicken breast to my pot. And I had just seasoned it when I cooked it with a little salt and pepper, you know, some chicken bouillon, stuff like that. So that's all the seasoning that was on there. I had not seasoned it yet for my quesadillas. So anyway, you can use rotisserie chicken or whatever you have will work just fine, or you don't have to use it at all if you don't want to. All right, now I tasted it once it heated up a little bit, and I thought it needed a little bit more salt and pepper. So I added a little bit more salt and pepper, and I went ahead and I mixed that up. And in between when I add seasonings, I like to let it kind of come back to a boil a little bit so the seasonings can get good and mixed in, and then I'll taste it again and see if I need to add anything. Well, I decided I wanted to add some of this caramelized onion butter. Now, it's by Kinder Joy. You can get it right at Walmart. It's pretty inexpensive, too. It just has kind of an oniony and buttery flavor that is so, so good. So, but add whatever seasonings that you like, okay? Then we're going to stir that up. We're going to let it heat. You can cook it on high for 10, 15 minutes, or I cut it down on low and let it cook for about 45 minutes to an hour. Just cook it until your potatoes are done and your soup has thickened up. And y'all already know I had to be a little bit extra and add me a little bit of shredded cheese and a little bit of chives right on top of mine. But y'all, I'm telling you, Everybody love this. You've got to try it. It is so good. All right, that's all I've got for y'all today. I will catch y'all on the next one. Bye, y'all.